CC Starburst is found under the simulation category. If I go down there and apply it to this photo of Starburst, <laughs> then we can see what exactly is happening. It's going to make the background transparent, so I'm gonna turn off my transparency grid, and my comp is filled with all of these spheres that are based on the colors of the image I applied it to. And if I play this, it's actually animated, so we're flying through this field of spheres. So let's take a look at the controls and talk about what's actually happening. First of all, we have this scatter property. If I turn that all the way down to zero, then we're actually going to have a grid of spheres exactly like CC Ball Action, where it's sampling all the colors from the pixels below these spheres and placing them onto a grid. And I can control the grid spacing down here to make the spheres larger or smaller. But with all of these spheres in this perfect grid, if I play it back, you can see that this is just shifting all of these spheres on the Z axis towards the camera and then fading them out and back in. It's basically a loop. And since they're all on a single plane with no scattering at all, they're all fading in and out at the exact same time. As soon as I turn that scattering up, then they're all going to exist on different points on that Z plane, and they're all gonna fade in and out at different rates. Now this is a pretty dense star field if what you're going for is actually making stars, and the stars themselves are pretty large. So I'd probably turn that grid spacing down to say three or even two, and then turn the size of the spheres down as well, to get something that looks a little bit more like you're traveling through space. And we can control the speed. If you don't wanna go quite so fast, I could drop this down to 0.5. Or if I turn that all the way down to nothing, then I can animate this by hand using the phase property. Now, unfortunately, there is no way to set the fade in and fade out distance, so they're always going to fade in and out at the same place. So this may not be the best option for that application. The only other property we have is blending with original, which will basically just dial back the transparency of this effect, but that's it for CC Starburst. Now, applying it to a photo isn't necessarily the most effective thing to do if what you are trying to pull off is a star field. So what I'm gonna do is just add a fill effect to this before I apply CC Starburst and just fill it with white. So this should now just give us a white solid for all of these stars to exist on, and now it looks a little bit more like actual stars but I still don't have any way of dialing back the density of these stars. To do something like that, we're basically going to need to limit the amount of pixels within this image. So I'm going to add a Venetian blinds effect just before the fill effect and increase the completion to dial back how many of the pixels are actually being sampled for these stars. So if I turn off CC Starburst, this is what I'm left with, with Venetian blinds. It allows me to just trim back a lot of that layer which in turn gives CC Starburst less to sample. So it's a less dense star field now. And I can trim that back as much as I want. Maybe increase the width and then increase the completion to really dial that back. And maybe those spheres are a little bit small now that there's less of them. So I'll just increase that and turn down my grid spacing. And now I have something that looks a little bit more realistic. It still bothers me that they're fading out, but there's really nothing I can do about that. But that is CC Starburst in a nutshell. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this tutorial, then check out the other ones here on my YouTube channel. And if you like my teaching style, then definitely check out my longer form content on Skillshare and School of Motion. And if you want to support more tutorials like this one, check out my Patreon. You can find links for all that stuff in the description of this video.